so this year's game against Washington was a lot different than last year's game against Washington. And um, in fact, this year's game was probably a lot different than most games that Bears have had. Uh, I can't remember the last time Bears put up 40 points. What'd you guys think of that game? Um, it's kind of funny you bring up, you know, just what happened last year and how many times we were talking off camera of how many times the Bears got in the red zone against Washington and just couldn't punch it in. And when I saw we had them on our schedule again, I just kind of knew that kind of facing generally the same Washington team, we just had to punch it in this time. And not only did we punch it in whenever we got close, but we had explosive plays. I mean, DJ Moore was scoring wherever he, he caught the ball from almost. And Justin Fields was thrown with almost pinpoint accuracy. And mostly I just hope he I, I knew he was capable of what he showed. Now the the you know the test is continuing that. I thought the similar thing, but completely in the opposite direction. I thought like, oh man, you know, this Washington team, should we compare it to last season? And I wanted to really bad because of what you said, which was that it was such a similar team. But then I was like, ah, it's the NFL, you know, every year is so different and yada, yada, yada. And I think that uh, the Bears just played a really good game last year against such a crazy defensive line because it is a really, really good defensive line. And then sure enough, they did it again. Man, like I was impressed with everything. The offensive line played incredibly well against top three defensive line. You know, the the offense moved the ball. They had a much better game plan. And um, I get excited when it's time to get excited, and I get really negative when it's realistic times to get negative. And, man, I saw a lot of good things against Washington. I'm super happy with that game. I know it's against two bad teams in a row, but, man, um, I see a lot of good little things being done in the last two weeks. You know, we try and be honest when bad is bad, right? And uh, nobody likes an 0-4 team. There's a, plenty of – criticism to go around when you're not winning games but when good is good you got you know you got to appreciate the goods this is the only victory this year but you know what makes you feel good about this team moving forward so when you go back to last week I think that was 100% a game we should have won winning against Washington in the fashion that we did kind of made the Broncos loss hurt even more because now we're heading into uh, a one in four Minnesota team and we could have you know went 500 but now we're fighting to go two and four and just seeing the week's progression. I Justin Fields against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. A lot of people were harsh on him. I wasn't as harsh on him for the simple fact that you saw the growth in him trying to be a pocket passer. He had moments where he wasn't throwing the ball. And I was screaming the loudest on Twitter that if you're going to sit back there and not throw it, we're going to be looking for a new quarterback. But these last few weeks, he's finally just kind of seems like he's trusting himself and throwing with a little bit of anticipation. And yeah, he's still not perfect, but you see the progression. And statistically, he's taken a massive leap from his rookie year to his second year in QBR and now from his second year to his third year. So I think the team's success this year was about Justin Fields. This year was about figuring out, do we have our franchise quarterback in Fields and are we going to continue to build on him uh, with him? These past two weeks, Fields has showed that he's capable of growing as a quarterback. He hasn't proved that he is the future quarterback, but he at least is showing that he could be. So that that's what stands out the most to me and gives me hope is that, you know, Fields continues to stack games like this. And not every game is he going to have four touchdowns, but at the very least look like a competent quarterback week in and week out. That gives me, you know, faith that we can continue to make trades potentially and, you know, build around the team instead of starting from scratch with a brand new quarterback. You know, I, I thought last year's performance earned him the right to, to be here throughout his contract and possibly the fifth year option if we decide to pick it up. Right. So this year, yeah, every chance you get, you go with fields and you try and give them every opportunity possible to figure it out. And like I said, there's plenty of blame to go around. I was pretty harsh on fields because I feel it always starts with the execution on the field by the players. And if the, at least the layups aren't being hit, then I can't really criticize above that. And I felt like there was just a lot of little stuff that wasn't being done right. But this game, you saw the opposite. You saw the little things being done right. Look, third and one, or third and short, or fourth and one, you're not lining up Cole Komet. <laughs> take a direct stat. You're actually doing what you're supposed to do to sit there and pick up that yard, right? I think you hit it, you hit the nail on the head in your opening statement where now it's going to be about consistency. 
Now, we know it's not going to happen every single game, right? Like teams have ups and downs and ups and downs, and we're currently on an up, but you got to be able to string these types of games together, you know, and, and string the wins together. And if you can do that, then we'll take the bad and we'll take the growing pains. But but we need this. You know, we need this at least from time to time to show that, hey, this team has taken a step forward in the right direction. Um, no, yeah, you guys said it so perfectly because – I'm at this point, after what you guys said, I'm struggling to think of the little things that make me so excited about any potential moving forward. And I'm trying to keep myself in check because when I see something bad, I call it out and I get really down really fast because I just know it's a game about execution. But then when you see little things being changed from the very beginning and top down, it, it makes me very excited. Cole Komet not taking third and one or third and short snaps fourth and short snaps that is because it's just common sense there's other players and there's other you know coaches in the league that know that justin Fields should get the ball in fourth and short do a cubic sneak do a tush push like everybody's doing it just so many little things that get me so excited about the next few weeks moving forward to see if they keep going because the defense improved slightly i want to see that against minnesota because they look fantastic on offense O-line looked really, really good, and I think a lot of that has to do with Tevin Jenkins and just some consistency there and see what happens at center. I know that Fields can't keep this pace up because that's ridiculous because right now he's playing like a top-five quarterback. So unless he can actually be a top-five quarterback, I want to see how long and how consistent this can go so I can feel comfortable seeing how confident I am in him moving forward rather than wanting to draft a new QB. Because if he does a few more weeks of this, regardless of what's around him, I want to see what he can do for the next two, three years. That's enough growth to me that I wanted to see this offseason that I feel comfortable moving forward. If this guy can go from you know, doing what he did for an entire season last year in eight to ten games, passing-wise, statistically, I'm okay with it. I want to see, I want to see the year after and the year after that. You know, I know you mentioned Tevin Jenkins. It's it's really interesting putting to get, uh, the tape together on the offensive drives for this game. I really noticed the drives where he wasn't in on were the failed drives. Um, I, I think there was maybe one that he was in on that kind of went three and out. You know, I, I know that position doesn't have the greatest impact. However, he, he really did. Uh, you know, there was no pressure from his end. He created running lanes. He helped a lot of things make happen. I mean, it, it's amazing how – much we needed that guy back. Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, I Tevin Jenkins has been one of my best, my favorite players for a while now. I think he's a top three guard in the league if when he's healthy. Um, he just had so many issues, and I think he's worth that second contract in my mind because if you let him go somewhere else and he figures out how to be healthy or he's just more consistent, like you're gonna regret this one for the rest of your for the rest of your life. So I think he's deserved he deserves that second contract. And I want to see him here moving forward because he's one of my favorite players in the Bears. And I think he's, you know, a top three guard when he's healthy. I mean, Tevin is definitely one of my favorite guys as well. But um, I agree. He's a top three guard whenever he's healthy. I think health is the biggest issue. But you look at Teron Armstead in Miami, they don't regret paying him. He misses four games every single season. So if we're going to get Tevin Jenkins for 12 games every single year, he's worth it. So, yeah, I think he, he definitely deserved a second contract. And you do see the difference in the offensive line with him in there. I think the Bears are middle of the pack um, offensive line. They do allow sacks, but at the same time, Fields has held the ball too long at times, and that's not really on the offensive line. So I think our O-line is in that top 10 to top 15 range as a unit. And with everybody healthy, I think we have a top 10 offensive line. And Moving forward, I mean, we're only going to be able to add to that and just keep getting better. I want to see a consistent center on this team. Yeah. Like a good, consistent center. Like, we've had literally three p people play at center already in four <laughs> games. It's crazy. It's nice to have an, a really good center, but, like, statistically, if you look at it, any good center in the NFL right now, like a top-five center, they're all third and fifth round picks, third to fifth, and mm -hmm. they, like, get developed over time. So it's like – I'm really excited about even the idea of Doug Kramer being healthy. Yeah, yeah and I'm just like, man, I, I'd like to see a four-year center, just a guy who's intelligent and, like, scrappy, just, like, not getting hurt. So, uh, you know, center position. Like, we need to get used to the idea that we can improve and get rid of some players that we may be attached to or like. So 
guys like Braxton Jones getting replaced potentially. Like I love, love, love Braxton Jones, but there is a possibility where he gets replaced by a really good first or second round pick. And I need to get okay with that. And, you know, the ups, the upswing of it potentially is much greater than the status quo, which is he's, you know, a fifth round left tackle. I want to have a good offensive line next year. And that's, I think that's when we really need to evaluate fields again. Cause we said that like, Oh, with fields and all these new toys, Whenever he's played with the new toys, he's shown that he is worth keeping here. And then every other every other thing that he has is either hurt or not working right. That's just funny you brought up, you know, Braxton Jones, because I've said that so many times. And earlier, I want to say in June, I made a YouTube video of saying how Braxton Jones could be a slow developer into a long-term starter. Like, I'm as high on Braxton Jones as anybody else is. But if the Bears draft a Olu from... Uh, what is it, Penn State or Joe Alt from Notre Dame, and they're all pro caliber left tackle. People don't understand that is a good problem to have. Good NFL teams replace decent to good players and they draft elite prospects. And then you have the situation where now the one, the elite um, prospect doesn't have to be rushed in because you have a Braxton Jones. And two, if they beat out Braxton Jones, now you have a really, really good swing tackle. And, and Larry Borum, who already is in replacing Braxton Jones, and he, I think he's one of our worst linemen right now. He has, He's had his peaks, but I think he graded out as like an eight overall pass blocking grade this past um, week. And, you know, his mistakes are, are glaring when he does mess up. I think he allowed a sack on Justin Fields um, on Thursday night. So I'm definitely with you on that as far as just continuously adding talent to that offensive line year in and year out. I think there's there's no point in any NFL franchise where you say, okay, this offensive line is set, no need to draft. No, I am pro draft an offensive lineman every single year. Fields has had two incredible weeks now, back-to-back. And, you know, how much more do you need to see before you're comfortable with him being the guy moving forward and not not having to worry about potentially drafting another quarterback high in the first round? Last year, it was never Bryce Young versus Justin Fields. It was Bryce Young versus Justin Fields plus Darnell Wright plus DJ Moore plus all the other things we got. With Caleb Williams is the exact same situation. Now, I will say if the Bears suck the rest of the year and the number one pick is from the Bears pick, yeah, Caleb Williams is a Chicago Bear. If the if Carolina gives us the number one and Justin Fields, he just continues to take a leap and you believe that he's going to keep getting better, the, the comparison is Justin Fields plus all whatever we can get from trading down for a, a prospect like Caleb Williams to go to another team. And this draft class is the... I've said it on Twitter. This is the class of classes. Not only is this class extremely top heavy, but it's also extremely deep. And you trade the number one pick with a guy like Caleb Williams. So you're looking at so many extra picks that you can now build around Justin Fields. So with all that being said, Fields has the benefit of the doubt that he doesn't have to be perfect. He just has to prove that he he just has to show that he can continue to get better what a fields i guess season would look like for me for me to be like no he's our guy i think he needs to continue this trajectory of passing yards um i know four touchdowns is is too much to ask for to sustain consistently but the yardage uh, he needs to sustain the yardage consistently he had i think 250 or 60 or somewhere it was under 300 yards But DJ Moore was like the majority of his yards. So I think he's on pace for somewhere between like 3,700 yards right now. He's not even on pace for 4,000 yards if he continues at his current trajectory. So I think he needs to, at the very least, finish above 3,600 yards. I think he needs to flirt with 30 touchdowns. Um, And I'll count rushing touchdowns. Um, He needs to be around 30 touchdowns plus total. I think he needs to get that interception number down 11 or 12, you know, 12. Okay. 12 interceptions with around 30 touchdowns is is pretty decent, but I would like to see some substantial decline in him turning the ball over. That's, that's the number one thing. I think he's proved already. He can get the yards. He's proved he can get the touchdowns. It's just, he, 
has to stop turning the ball over and continue to prove that he can get the ball out quick. You know, one of the things with those turnovers, too, is that these have come in a lot of late game situations. Yeah. You know, um, they're not necessarily early in the first quarter. They're usually in the fourth quarter. That's one of the things that I've kind of noticed that's, you know, that I feel like needs to improve that, you know, I want to see the control at the end of the game. You know, at the end of the day, the stats are going to be what they're going to be and the results are going to be what they're going to be, too. And it's a results based business. And, you know, uh, so we need those to go a certain way. Um, You know, I feel this has been nice two games in a row to see the offense clicking. I don't expect it to continue constantly. Like you said, four touchdowns is a big number and he's done it two games in a row now. You know, if there is a slump, I need to see a bounce back. You know, if they do have a bad game, I, I don't want to see two or three bad games. I need to see you come back and, like I said, look like this thing is progressing. And I think, you know, uh, we could throw numbers out there. We could throw stats out there. By the way, I think it's funny that the Internet um, acts like rushing touchdowns don't score you the same amount of points as passing touchdowns, you know. <laughs> like, t- a touchdown is a touchdown, right? So, you know, I, I, a lot of it's on the eye test for me, you know, and it's kind of almost like a gut feeling type thing. Like, I, this thing has to look right. Um, as well as put up certain statistics and whatnot. There was also some of those throws were tight window throws that it seems like he was totally afraid to make because, one, not only are you risking the potential for an interception, but, two, when you do hit the guy in the hands, he would drop it. So it's like, why am I going to sit here and try and make this tight window throw when all the risk is on me for a pick six? And at the end of the day, you know, Chase Claypool's dropping it or whoever's dropping it. Um, DJ Moore's not dropping it. No, he, he gets a hand on the ball, he's coming down with it, and we saw that. I mean, he had a career-high game, which is also great for him. I'm so happy for him because that dude needed to see some kind of success early on here in order to keep uh, in order to keep that energy flow up throughout the season and throughout his career here because, you know, if you get off to a rough start, he, he could never bounce back. You know, if you- Big fan of Justin Fields, always have been. I think I'm going to be one moving forward, but – Right now, I do see him doing a lot of little things that are just much better than what we saw at the beginning of the year. And because of that, I mean, I'm I'm very much okay with picking up a fifth-year option already at this point. I think regardless of who you bring in next year, there are much worse guys that you can bring in in the offseason to, at best, if he's a top 15 quarterback, I'm okay with having him as a fifth-year option guy and then grooming a, a young later-round draft pick behind him or even like uh, Tyson Badgen and keeping him on the roster and just seeing what happens. And then let's say he's top tier, top five, then obviously the draft changes for you completely. And you basically can get a King's ransom wherever you want, depending on where you're, you know, one of your two top picks lands, but a number one overall pick Caleb Williams gets you much more of a King's ransom than even Carolina got you last year because Caleb Williams is not Bryce Young. That is not even close to, the value you would get in this type of draft and what you would get for trading out of the first overall pick. And then let's say Justin Fields is the worst case scenario and he's a bottom third. He's like 30th to 35th overall quarterback. Then yeah, you're going to be a really bad team. You're going to get one of the top three quarterbacks of this draft. You're going to get Kaylee Williams, Drake may, um, I don't know, whoever else that you want to you know pick up in the first t- 10 picks. And then at that point, there's worse things than you could have than Justin Fields and then grooming your first overall pick. I would like to see a situation for the Bears if they do not have a quarterback of the future on this roster to draft a first, you know, third overall pick, fifth, tenth, and groom him for six to ten games behind Justin Fields before they let him start. I'm sick of seeing a guy get thrown into the fire and just failing right away, and I don't want to see that anymore. So I think for Fields, for me to see him move forward, he's pretty much of already – He's pretty much already earned his fifth-year option in my mind. And then to keep him as a starting quarterback on this team, if he does this six more times this season, I think I'm sold. Just on the potential alone. If he does this six more times out of, what, 14 games left or uh, 12 games left, I'm I'm fine with it. I, I don't see – I think in the NFL now, what you're seeing is a lot more mediocre play at quarterback and there's only three to five guys that are exceptional. So if you have one of the three to five guys, great. You don't have to replace them. Everyone else, you just let them play. You have playoff teams playing Daniel Jones, Mac Jones, uh, Derek Carr, Desmond Ritter. Like, none of these guys would 
take Justin Fields' job. So why not just let it play out and see what happens? A lot of people want to compare what Caleb Williams could be, and I think a lot of people are just entranced in the possibility of drafting one of those guys that you said. And it's just a possibility. It's not even a for sure thing, but I just feel like the underlying thing here and why I said this year was about field figuring out who fields was, was because it is invaluable to continue to not only stack a bunch of draft picks, but actually use these draft picks at some point on premium talent, because you look like a, you look at a team like the Eagles, they built both sides of the ball, built the team around Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz failed, and they replaced him with a second rounder. You look at a team like the 49ers, they built the team up. Jimmy G failed. They went and got Trey Lance. Trey Lance failed. They ended up getting Brock Purdy. You look at the Kansas City Chiefs. People love to talk about how you know paramount um, Patrick Mahomes is uh, to the success of the Chiefs, which obviously he is, but... The Chiefs made the playoffs three years in a row before Patrick Mahomes even took the reins as the starting quarterback. They were making the playoffs consistently with Alex Smith. So it is paramount to me that the Bears continue, no matter what happens with the quarterback situation, I think it's more important to just build a championship roster around whoever is that quarterback. And Next next game against the Vikings. You know, um, although they've still looked pretty good on offense, their record does not reflect it. They, they've been losing some games, but they've been in a lot of those games. And uh, I don't know. What are, you, what are you guys' predictions? What are you- I don't think the Vikings are a good football team. Um, you go back to 2021. They had a whole bunch of one-score games. They lost a bunch of one-score games. You go to 2022. They had a bunch of one-score games. They won all the one-score games. You come back to 2023, they're in a whole bunch of one-score games again, and they're losing a bunch of one-score games. So I don't think this Vikings team was ever a legitimate contending team, and they're on the downtrend right now. I think Justin Jefferson masks a lot of issues within that team, and Kirk Cousins is a good enough quarterback to get the ball to open wide receivers. He is. And... Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison are wide receivers who get open consistently. I don't think that Vikings team has a difference maker besides the, those two wide receivers. I don't think anybody the Bears should fear. So with all that being said, me guarding myself, I guess I'll, I'll, I'd want to say that if we lose, it won't be a shocker co- compared to the games that we have lost already. But just as a pure football fan, a non-biased fan, I think it would be embarrassing if the Bears come out and lose this game. Um, I, I think the Bears should win this game. They need to stack two. We talk about stacking good games. We need to stack wins. We need to show that, you know, that win wasn't a flake. But I, I think we we should be beating the Vikings at least by a touchdown. Uh, I try not to get too up and too down, but I, I can't help myself. Because I really, when I see when I see good Bears football, I get really excited. And <laughs> I've seen two weeks of good Bears football, and I've watched the last three Viking games probably live, if not, you know, at least four, like eighty percent of them. Um, it's a really bad Vikings team, and as of right now, also Justin Jefferson is not playing. Oh, I forgot about that. So Justin Jefferson has a hamstring injury that could keep him out for weeks. So with how good the offense has been playing and you're getting back Jalen Johnson, Eddie Jackson, Eddie Jackson and Kyler, and Kyler, Kyler Gordon, Gordon just got activated and Kyler Gordon and then Doug Kramer. I'm cautiously optimistic as hell that this might be an awesome game for the Bears. And hopefully Tevin Jenkins isn't on a snap count like he was last week. Right. You have a 10 day mini buy. Those are great for, you know, getting healthy for Tevin Jenkins, who's, Really, like, basically, he's ready to go, but he just needs a little bit of rest time to ramp up. Ramp up but, is Eber. Yeah, I love, I love those. Uh, it's just a good, it's a good, solid sports phrase. You just ramp them up. Um, <laughs> that's why little white dudes are always scrappy. R, you know, for recovery. Scrappy, a, scrappy receiver. for being activated. M, for, no. <laughs> yeah. Managing of time. Yes. Um, yeah, no, it's, yeah, that's so stupid. But, like, it's just those buzzwords that work. So, yeah, I mean, I think I, I, 
I fear doing score predictions and all that stuff all the time, but I think it's a good game that matches up really well with the Bears and what they do well and what the Vikings do not do well right now. So I think if your biggest threats are Jordan Addison and 17 is K.J. Osborne, right? (laughs) Uh, like, I think that's a pretty good situation to be in with TJ Hawkinson and Alexander Madison. Like, yes, the Vikings will score. As long as this is a shootout and you can keep up like you have been in the last two weeks, which you should be able to, your offense is trending in the right direction. The Vikings do not have a shutdown defense. You should be able to keep up in this game and win one game this season for the love of God, you know, 30 to 27 or 30 to 24. So, like, for me, you know, we don't – our score predictions end up terribly most of the time as well. But I'm I'm predicting at least, like, a 27-23 Bears win finally. I'm going to say that the offense keeps going. I have seen nothing in the last two weeks that would indicate the fact that these are fluky wins. My biggest issue if the Bears had been winning the last two weeks is if all of a sudden the screens that we've been calling nonstop worked. Right then, you give Luke Getzey false confidence. Well, no, we're running less screens, running more QB sneaks, we're running more designed QB runs, and we're letting Justin Fields sling it down the field and exclusively to DJ Moore. That is the exact thing you should be doing with this offense. So these are good coaching, you know, adjustments that you're making three games, four games into the season that should have been from the very beginning. That's a given. We know this. It's been frustrating. This is what your offense should have looked like from the very beginning. But at least you're getting the idea. You're understanding that run the hell out of the ball, run some play actions really deep, run some QB design runs, and give the ball to DJ Moore. And you're going to win most games. The Vikings are good. They're not terrifying. Kirk Cousins will be consistent. They'll score 20 points. But please win a shootout for once. Just once. Yeah, it's it's funny that you give your prediction because it's it's really close to mine. I was thinking twenty seven, twenty four, or you know, or you know, or twenty four, twenty one. But I was thinking like a, a little three point victory, and I I hope it's more than that. Um, you know, the one thing I kind of I think about is week one, the Packers didn't have their number one wide receiver, and you know, very inexperienced team, very young team, and they they torched us. They gave it to us. And hopefully we've grown a lot since then and learned a lot more since then. But, uh, the, you know, there has been some poor execution out there. I do think – listen, I will be the biased Bears fan. I don't care. And I, I've been saying it the whole time. I first need to see it, okay? I it got to a point where it's like, okay, I'm going to sit here and predict every game to be a loss unless you show me otherwise. And – They've shown me otherwise this last week, okay? Not only did they win, but they won in a a very good fashion. And so I will sit there and say, okay, let's get this thing back on track. There's still still wins on the schedule. My prediction of seven wins is still very achievable here. But, okay, you know, but we need to win this one now, right? So we need to win this one, and we might need to win against the Raiders too. If we win three in a row, we're in a much, much, much different position than – you know, than 0 and 4. 